Nobody puts more of themselves into a poetry book than Brenda. Her loves, her activism, a kind of a radiantly playful childhood self, even in sad poems, even in mourning. And there's a, her new book is called In a Few Minutes Before Later. And there's a poem which I'm going to probably mistitled, but it's like, for pre-emerging and post-emerging poets. And it's just Brenda saying how hard it is and the courage that's needed and it, it, it's a, a page of talk ending, love Brenda. So for any of you out there, including me, she's talking to us and saying, keep, keep on poet, poetizing. Also, I, I, I may be um, misstating, but I think this book is the beginning of a new cycle of poems on time, a new cycle of books on time. So here she is, Brenda Hillman. Richie's almost right. It's actually the third. I'm, I snuck up with a second tetralogy. Is this audible? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wrote a tetralogy on uh, the elements, earth, air, water, fire, and that was a 20-year-long project. And the last book of the, of the elements series was actually the first book on writing about time, uh, seasonal works with letters on fire. And then I did days, and now I did minutes, and now I'm working on a century. Richie mentioned this poem, and I actually was going to start with it, with, and he read my mind. Uh, very surprising. It's a prose piece. It's not really a poem. It's an essay, kind of. But um, how many people are writing poetry? Raise your hands. OK, so this is for all of you. Um, I was asked to. Um, by a young poet named Lisa Wells to, um, to comment um, to her and others that she knew about being discouraged about your poetry. And so um, she asked us to write, uh, several of us, to write a piece. It, it was posted on um, the poetry website. And um, it, it took a long time to figure out what to say. So this paragraph is actually a few months of thought. Dear emerging, pre-emerging, and post-emerging poets. Is it popping to you? Is there, are there a lot of pops? No, it's not bad? OK, because it's very loud popping to me. Lisa has asked me to write you a note in case you are feeling discouraged about some public aspects of your poetry. It's hard not to be discouraged when there is so much ignorance helplessly displayed toward our art. It's not surprising that you feel overly sensitive when poetry or your poetry is ignored. Books of poetry are left off best of lists. They are rarely reviewed in major venues, and when they are mentioned, it might be only for some perceived aspect of marketable content. Try to get past this. 
You are bringing your rare imagination and your love of language to the culture that needs those things. Poetry is not a specialized field. It has universal and eternal value. It is something most people start writing when they are children. It is what humans read to each other at weddings and funerals. It takes us into vast spiritual adventures. It enacts original dreams. You do not need to dumb down your art or ignore a century of modernist practice to please what is sometimes called a larger audience. It is not a poet's job to simplify the mystery of existence or its lexicon. Is the life of the soul ever easy? When you feel downcast, keep in mind those who have encouraged you along the way and write for them. Imagine a stranger may be reading one of your poems in secret someday. Try not to think about people who are writing facile things on the internet. Remember the radical ancestor poets who have gone before, especially those who received less acknowledgement than they should have, those whose genius was insufficiently recognized. Their poetry provides excellent company, as does the work of great living poets who offer inspiration and consolation. Read across aesthetic lines and identity groups, assembling a varied canon. When you feel paralyzed by the pointlessness of temporary fashion, or when dull or predictable work is lauded, try new things that will surprise you as you work for the joy of the process, remembering that all a writer needs are four true readers, and one of them can be a tree. Never look at your phone when walking downstairs. Do not destroy your body by self-medicating under poetic stress. Just write new poems and read them to your community. Keep the ego in balance because the ego project is doomed to fail. If you don't receive the rewards you deserve from the outside world, and you very likely will not, try to celebrate the good work of others. Hold love in your heart, work for justice for humans and non-humans, and keep writing. Love, Brenda. So it's in a kind of section. I decided to put a section in this book. It's got a rotting orange on the front. And um, uh, to writers, you know, just to my community of writers. A feeling right before the feeling. So, you know, when you're going to write into a poem, and sometimes there's, there's something that you can't get at, so you write into the more immediate place, and you think, oh, I'm going to write a poem about that, and it, you, you think it's a feeling you're going to write into, but really there's a feeling right before that feeling. It was for a, um, I'll tell you. At sunrise, the deer eat pieces of the quiet. They eat spaces between the quiet and the sounds, and the numbers on the calendar lie flat in their boxes. They leak through tiny holes in the minutes, evenly so, so evenly, an active sense before the sense was made. There now, opposite to set down, the agreed upon, the shape of the obvious drawn by an earlier enchantment before the new anxiety set in. The workers are safe, the terror stilled for an hour, a lover's outline, dreamed or imagined, before you read the one-page book again. What was that book? It had no copyright. And what was before? A life, the dazzler, the dark, the singing dust. It turned when you turned. It Orpheus knew that you forgot when you took the bowl of burning time across the room. And if the previous is closer to you now, should you look? It doesn't matter if you do. You carry the sum of it, with it, out into it. For Louise Glick. And I'm going to read a poem by Louise that is in um, House on Marshland, a really great book. All Hallows, um, it's the first poem in the book. Even now, this landscape is assembling. The hills darken, the oxen sleep in their blue yoke. The fields having been picked clean, the sheaves 
bound evenly and piled at the roadside among sink foil as the toothed moon rises. This is the barrenness of harvest or pestilence. And the wife, leaning out the window with her hand extended as in payment, and the seeds, distinct, gold, calling, come here, come here, little one. And the soul creeps out of the tree. As many of you know, um, we lost her yesterday, and um, she was a, a friend for 45 years, almost 45 years. As you can tell by my sneakers um, and my orange, I'm an, a fan of autumn, so I'll read a couple poems about autumn. So I decided there were more than four seasons in California. I decided there were about 25. And this um, book has four years of seasons, including lots of tracking of micro seasons. Um, so th there's a way in which you kind of get a feel for something that's happening. Um, and you get used to going to that, that little place. And um, there's a place near in Lafayette where my first husband is um, buried in Lafayette. And where I, when I stand in these places, I, I get the feeling of just the whole um, universe of seasons coming through. This is an autumn poem about that place between the souls and the meteors. The ancestors turn in the sycamore, leaves like hunched over squirrels. A freeze might take the lemon tree, that thing of dozing over a book, the writer just god powder now. Miles up, sparks dragged through meteors. Miles down, creatures eat rock mixed with fire. Someone prays for you even if you don't like it. Our suicides sleep in the mind of a word. We want our mother not to have suffered. Moonbeam snake before the tan oak shivers. We want our father not to have suffered or the three cats sprinkled with western dawn. The little baby sleeps on his side, his dream face turned to the woods. A fox sleeps with its mouth of color and the O in your head, the damaged vowel, where the skin rises to meet the wound. What does that spell? I don't know, I don't know, since it got to go on living. But it seems like basically it's kind of a combination. Everything means everything, plus there is no hidden meaning. And this is a poem I want, I'd like to um, ask you to close your eyes while you listen to it. Um, because of what's happening, um, I wanted to read this poem. It's, it, I do a lot of work with trance um, and self-hypnosis, and sometimes I'll take a word and just ask it to um, move into, into um, different conditions. Uh, and I was thinking about hate this week and so much hate and terrible hate. Autumn ritual with hate turned sideways. I pull the hate on a rope ladder to the resting zone. H, H, H. Pull the A on down. A, A, A. Put that sick A to bed. Get well, A. Pinched fire. Bring the T down now. T, T, T. Roman cross before the Christian thing. Bump, bump. Put that T to bed. Put that Garamon T to bed before we kill someone with it such as whack, whack, weapons contractors in Virginia, whack. Get well, T, won't kill with you. Now, being able to breathe for the E, breathe into the prongs, slide on its back, E, E, E. Put the E to bed, get well, E. Weird shapes around campfires below the mind. Tiny fires with hurt earth spirits as an Aeschylus. Resting letters now, so they can live.
Um, and I'll read a brand new poem. I, whenever Bob's in um, an audience, I like to read something he hasn't heard before. So this is a brand new. I'm trying to write about childhood, which I don't write a, about a whole lot. And um, it's hard to write about childhood. This is called Childhood Eternity During Science Class Fragment. The child opened the science book. Of course, there is a place no one sees. Inside that place, another place. Inside that place, an unknowable realm. She was shy. Not saying too much about this seemed truer, she thought, smoothing the wrinkles off the book on the steel rim desk where stains from the previous child were etched on the shellacked wood. Her task was to stay tethered on earth for them long enough, then taken back in secret like an overdue library book. And I'll close with a poem um, in extra hidden, uh, sorry, in, um, in a few minutes before later uh, that's in a section of political poems. Um, it comes from not exactly rage and sorrow, a cocktail of rage, sorrow, and joy, but sort of like that. There's a place on Telegraph between, um, like between the hat shop and Amoeba Records that I love, that it has one of those, one of those smell meaning places for me. So this is all of you who might have been around, for all of you who might have been around in 1967, that's the name of the poem. And it takes me about uh, eight minutes to read. And so this is the last thing I'll read. Thank you so much for coming and um, for your poems. And um, how many of you have nieces and nephews? OK. They all need poetry books. So Pegasus has very nicely come. And even if you have plenty of poetry books, your nieces and nephews. So thank you, Pegasus, for being here. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, Joyce. We love you. 19, 1967. Each of these pages ends with uh, 1967. The thought of electrons giving off their light and their glory while every bit of otherness is betrayed. I'm walking up Telegraph during speeches for Aretha Franklin and John McCain delivered in eastern rooms where caskets are displayed. Heading to Amoeba for extra Aretha music, stopping to ask the young man, what is this? And he says, it's a dispensary. And I say, oh, for smoking pot. And he says, not just for smoking. You can eat it, rub it on. Big pot smell puffing out. Big contemptuous look from him. And fortunately, I do not start a sentence in my generation. The wrinkles in my face open their personal gates to the lyric fog, allowing color. Electrons pour into the brain till light brings minutes. Someday there will be a happy medium, cliche of a happy medium looking into a crystal ball, and to Naclesis. Many shops are closing now. Is Amoeba Records doomed? And if so, when? Apple charges $9.95 for music you can't touch. Stop pausing sunlight, there is nothing. In 1967, Master Charge was on the rise. 5.7 million holders then. I was in high school. MZ was born that year. Shay died in October in Bolivia. The edges are sharp on violent credit cards. Older women are pretty hard on ourselves. Not that predictions matter, but I never thought I'd be 67. You're not going to be able to save everything. There is pink sunlight with electrons falling during the minutes. We knew little but couldn't imagine killing children for the revolution, not even rich children. So many shops are out of business now. The first draft of the poem flew past as I felt a Western draft. The word draft meant state terror in 1967. The day I started this, a draft came through my wrinkles. Students weren't watching McCain's or Aretha's funeral. Still, getting through the day matters. The young pushed along down telegraph with electrons streaming through inverted parabolas of their headsets, bypassing their souls into consciousness. They don't seem to mind or feel the rage about the bloated fees to Apple. So much of this kind of thing. 7.3 
percent people of color were without jobs. 3.4 percent of whites were without jobs in 1967. Slick apartments go up in Berkeley while electrons fall apart without commitment to those heavy hadrons. One must have a mind of mycorrhizal netting to regard the thonic lining of carbon life under the avenue and to behold the universe as a skein of feeling dots where the energy is pure and whispers to the dead. Full of shame, I held the LP with respect by the edges and played it with my friends. Can you even imagine no internet? Respect us internet. Homoyo Teleton, off rhyme, she, when she sang R-E-S-P-E-C-T, even the boys felt it. Creatures in colors dash past the closed shops. Our students dash along, their grandparents from Philippines, from China, from Oakland, from Guam. They brush past. There were two, 297 corporate mergers, an increase of 578 from from 1966. These wrinkles on my skin are feared by America. Shall I cut my face behind? Do I dare to be a peach? Electrons speak in negatives at the southern Sather Gate. The pot shop bodyguard showed no respect for an older woman. Our innocent secrets are commodified. Pot was $10 for a big fat sack. We called it a lid of dope in 1967. MLK said the U.S. was the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. During the funerals, doves and crows call in slightly golden teardrops, squeezed amounts. Don't slide by back, guard the partitions. Ho Chi Minh's trail would not be known. The human hope is to be known. Everyone is wanting to be respected and not look back with oblivious eyes to R-E-S-P-E-C-T over and over and hope for understanding. Pampers were introduced and began to fill the land. Poisons built up, but so did delicious kits kissing. The Vatican took back the thing of no meat on Fridays. Help for the meat industry? Bodies opened for us truly. T.L. defiantly and with fond smoke on her hands passed banned books under the desk. Ulysses, mini skirt with pantyhose so you could sit with your legs open. Minutes, thank you for those. Humans were not stable then, never had been. When Ho Chi Minh asked that the bombings be halted, not only did they not stop, the U.S. opened bases in Thailand to be closer for access. Plagued by the sense of inadequacy and dread, we desired to make history. Love was less common then, so we lay on the grass while the bombing continued. Sometimes did. Read a little modernism. In 1967, art saved us then as now. As now, dread is followed by humility after you give a poetry reading. As now, as now is Antinapolis, which sounds like James, a James Joyce character. War, gossamer, and paste, plus shadows of actual daisies. We desired to make history. Love was less common before that, so we made it up. Some white men got beaten for one inch of extra hair, but black men had always been beaten. Bombing continued, sometimes did. Some babbled in English class on LSD. Some died before adulthood, adulthood before died. Mining tar sands had begun in Canada. Canada was where Peace Boys ran to. More anadiplosis. Some repetitions free you if you can't stop them in time. McCain was bombing for freedom, then captured. I threw no rocks till 1969. First televised bombing. The path winds through the jun jungle, path with bombs fully falling on the villagers. What did he think about while being tortured for five years? Electrons in his brain moving toward the Mekong. Students barely hear about the bombing of brown people now, or the double O of oil and opium plus famine plus profit. In 1967's version of R-E-S-P-E-C-T, the socket to me, socket to me was an expression we didn't understand. Some songs get you through the day, and that was one. Aretha traded irony for power. Irony is a defense for the sensitive unless it's overdone, like Walter Benjamin says about surrealism. And then later, the whole capitalist horror came down to you can sit on your ass if you're middle class and feel helpless. In Europe, students felt helpless and rose up. White kids were clueless about whiteness, rubbed butter on the skin to make it tan. Lead in the paint, lead in the water, dehaved ourselves and joined the crowd. Poetry was secret dope. Boys were an anarchist, then a pacifist, then most of a communist. 
Girls needed heroes, of course, and we tried to fix our looks, but never pretty enough, then got undressed in the desert without body shame while a rabbit chewed delicate grasses. The CIA gathered 300,000 names. TL passed Ulysses under the desk. Arrests. We had many minds with one soul. It held everything. Berries, herbs, homemade pies. OK, call me Arwen. The US said Viet Cong will be chased into Cambodia, and they were. They were chased. You were organizing. I would have loved you then. In 1967, Dow Chemical, the napalm, the toxins, the Roundup dumped in Nimradel. That year, a door was cut in my face. One of my wrinkles is named Capitalism. One is named Barry Goldwater, and all of them are named Don't Complain, Just Work More. I never forgave McCain, not even seeing his head swollen with cancer surgeries, because each time he made one of his smug speeches, I thought of the people he killed. He lay in Hanoi Hilton for five years, tortured but celebrated for not giving in to communists. And when they released him, he started asking the Pentagon for 30 more years of bombing till he died. On the day called today, when I started this poem in, nine, in 2018, I saw her picture in the Times. Red high heels, ankles crossed in the casket, the gleam entering wood and satin. Minutes pass through each one of us, one at a time. Music passes, turning dysfunctional families into miracles. History suffers, mothers suffer. Hegel says dialectical, but there are more than two. What percent of our 525,600 minutes this year will immediately turn to history? What percent will become radiant twice fallen infinity? As I walked up Telegraph before the first draft of this, I saw a housefly sitting on a piece of pizza trash, rubbing all of its elbows during Aretha's service, which I watched on my phone. It is not safe to look at your phone while walking. OK, change the tone, tired Brenda. Give the readers hope. Humans have radiant intelligence. They have a chance. Say, no one is like you. Say, we need others badly. Say. The alleged left has no heroes now. That's why our heroes are electrons, and they leap. They leap in their light and their glory. I'm trying to imagine useless revolt. I'm trying to trade resentment for energy and love. We get older, it gets wiser. You and I drive from the West with curry leftovers on paper bags. My tercets have fallen apart, Dante. Little takes, little takes, little take on, takes on history. What shall we do now, young friends? And I say care, as the earth will return to electrons from which it came. The small rails in this poem seem to be space and time when minutes seem to line up, but then don't. We wrote in our diaries and kept excellent records backward toward history and beside. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha was teaching people how to spell. Thank you.